Good morning and welcome. We're so pleased to welcome you to our online service. My name is Julian and this is my wife Becky and we're part of the Orpington Congregation. We're delighted that Cassandra from Bromley Common will be preaching this morning on the Great Commission. Uh, something that many of you know is very, very close to my heart. And Matt Lofthouse will be leading our worship together. We're so pleased and excited to be able to um, let you know if you don't already know that we're going to be doing our continuous prayer again this coming week. And believe it or not, this is our fourth time we've done prayer this way as a church, a group of churches, since we had our lockdown in March. And it's been really an amazing time. And we all know that as believers, we pray because it's at the heart of everything that we are as believers to pray. And, you know, we pray as individuals, we pray in our small groups, we pray in our prayer meetings on Zoom. But this is another way that we pray all together in, in this way and God meets with us. And it is just so important. And all those people that have joined us and been part of this in our last three events will testify that God spoke to them personally um, and we felt God spoke, spoke to us as a church as well through prophetic words, through verses, through pictures that came out of, of these last prayer events. And, um, you know, we're called to pray. There's so many places in the Bible that remind us of this. And I just want to draw out to you from Philippians 4 this morning. Um, and it says in verse 6, Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, make your requests known to God and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. And this is my, been my testimony uh, through praying in the, in the last times in the continuous prayer, that I've come with a whole load of things that are important to pray about, but as I've set aside that time to worship, to praise, to thank God, I've just met with God and I've just had my perspective changed again. You know, how big God is, how much he loves us, how precious it is to that I'm his child and that he cares for me and he has answered prayer and he will answer prayer and he's with me and situations then change in that hour and when we pray. And why do we find it so hard to pray? I know for myself, I can sometimes do everything that needs to be done but not pray first. And the simple reason is that the devil doesn't want us to pray because it is a weapon, a very powerful weapon. When we're together, we sing a song that we all know very well. Every prayer, a powerful weapon, strongholds come tumbling down. When we pray, and particularly when we're praying corporately together, strongholds come tumbling down, atmospheres are changed. Even world situations can be changed through people praying because God is such a powerful God and we pray. So please join us this week. If you haven't joined before, please join us. Julian's going to tell us some practical ways of how we do this and the times particularly. Um, but please join us and it's going to be very special. So we're starting this Thursday at 6am in the morning. Uh, one hour slots running through to 11pm each day finishing at 11 p.m. on Saturday 19th of September. We're encouraging everybody to sign up for at least one one hour slot and the link to the sign up sheet is set out on the screen now and has also been sent, has also been sent out via the congregation WhatsApp groups. If you've got any issues signing up or you can't access this list then please speak to me and I'll organise for you. And now we're going to be going into worship. We've got Matt Lofthouse uh, leading us this morning. And, you know, we're not together as people, we're in our homes, but we worship together as people before our God. I just I now want to just lead us in this time by reminding us of Psalm 100. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving, his courts with praise. Give thanks to him, bless his name, for the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever and his faithfulness to all generations. Let's join together as we worship our God. Let us 
our praise be your welcome. Let our songs be a sign. We are here for you. We are here for you. Let your breath come from heaven. Fill our hearts with your life. We are here for you. We are here for you. To you our hearts. To you our hearts are open. Nothing here is hidden. You are our one desire. You alone are holy, only you are worthy, God, let your fire fall down. Let our shout be your anthem, your renown, fill the skies, we are here for you, yes Lord. We are here for you. Let your word move in power. Let what's dead come to life. We are here for you. We're here for you, Jesus. We are here for you. To your hearts. You our hearts are open, nothing here is hidden. You are our one desire. You alone are holy, only you are worthy. God, let your fire fall down to our hearts. To you our hearts are open, nothing here is hidden. You are our one desire You alone are holy Only you are worthy God, let your fire fall down We are here for you We are here for you we are here for you, Lord. We welcome you with praise. We welcome you with praise. Almighty God of love, be welcomed in this place. We welcome you with praise. We welcome you with praise. Almighty God of love, be welcomed in this place. Let every heart adore. Let every soul awake, Almighty God of love, be welcomed in this place. We welcome you with praise. We welcome you with praise, Almighty God of love, be welcomed in this place. Here is hidden, you are our one desire. You alone are holy, only you are worthy. God, let your fire fall down to your hearts. You are hearts are open, nothing here is hidden. You are our one desire. You alone are holy, only you are worthy, God, let your fire fall down, let your fire fall, let your fire 
let your fire fall. Let your fire fall. We are here. We welcome you in praise. We welcome you in praise. Almighty God of love, be welcomed in this place. We welcome you in praise. We welcome you in praise. Almighty God of love, be welcomed in this place. Let every heart adore. Let every soul awake. Almighty God of love, be welcomed in this place. We welcome you in praise. We welcome you in praise. Almighty God of love, be welcomed in this place. Be welcome, Lord. Welcome you in praise. In this place, you're welcome, Lord. You're welcome, Lord. Welcome in this place. Come, Holy Spirit. Have your way. Have your way. Have your way in this place. Here, la 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 la, sword on my calabash. Here, la my sword, la la la, para here, la my sword, la la la. Here, la my sword. See, my la say. See, my sword. Pura masala va que la va a hacer. You're welcome here. You're welcome here. Hey Regions Beyond family, hope you're all doing well. Such a privilege and an honor to be able to share with you today. I want to take you to Acts 14 where we catch up with Paul and Barnabas on Paul's first missionary trip. Now for those of you who know the story, Paul and Barnabas are in Lystra. They begin to see God move again in the miraculous and unfortunately the crowd is turned against them. Paul is dragged out of the city and stoned and left for dead. And I think a lot of us can relate to Paul in this, in this moment that we were seeing God move in this incredible miraculous way whether it was in our personal lives whether it was in our churches or whether it was as part of the greater movement we're seeing God move and then suddenly things stop and chaos ensues and we feel like we've been dragged away from what God was doing and feeling a bit broken and a bit deflated but here's what Paul does he gets up and he goes to the next place he goes to Derby, which is about 60 miles away from Lystra where God is calling him next to this new place and God moves again there God moves again in Derby. And I believe that God has done the same with us. We are now meeting online. We're doing things virtually. This is a new place for us, but God is still moving, which is amazing. And we know that when we see the numbers of people who are... Uh, tuning into online services, when we see the new ways that we've been able to reach our communities through this time, it's incredible. But that wasn't the end for Paul. In fact, it says in Acts 14, when we go to um, verses 21 and 22 that they returned to Lystra and to Iconium and to Antioch strengthening the souls of the disciples encouraging them to continue in the faith and saying that through many tribulations we must enter the kingdom of God so they go back they go back to places they've been before but they don't go back the same Paul has been changed Paul has been changed by this experience in fact he writes in Galatians 6 that he now carries the marks of Jesus on his body as a result of what he's had to go through and I believe that for us as a movement as a family as a church as churches that we carry now the marks of the trials that Jesus is getting us through the marks of the trials that God is going to get us through and what that's going to mean is we're going to go back to places that we've been before we're going to go back to meeting as normal we're going to go back to the buildings that we've known to to the series that we've known but we're going to go back changed we have a new found 
newfound depth, a newfound perspective, a newfound vision for what God is doing. And we know that Paul, after this, after this event, only goes on to his further missionary trips where he takes the gospel further and wider. And I believe for us as a family, this, this time is going to be definitive in, in ensuring that we also take this newfound vision, this newfound depth, and take the gospel further and wider. Guys, stay blessed. We're praying for you. Take care. Oh, man. 
is who you are. That is who you are. To you are, Lord. You're the way maker. You're the miracle worker. Promise keeper. Light in the darkness. To you are. To you are. To you are. Thank you, Lord. We can trust in you. You can make a way. You have made a way. We believe in Lord. We believe in for the miracle to come. Thank you, Lord. Bring it forth, we pray. Bring it forth, we pray. Miracle worker. Promise keeper to you all. Yeah. To you all. To you all. And to you all. That is who you are. 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 That is who you the Bible. It's God's Word, right? But what's it really all about? All the stories, all the verses. Here's a thought. Did you know that there's a thread that runs throughout Scripture? A storyline that begins in the beginning and ends at the end. Here, I'll show you. You know in the beginning, right? In the beginning, God created the world and He saw that it was good. The sun, the moon, the animals, then he made man and woman. He made them to live with him in the garden, but they sinned, and their sin created a separation between them and God. But God had a plan, a plan that was bigger than Adam and Eve. God had a plan to call a people for himself, and through these people, to bless all people. The Israelites were God's chosen people, but sin wasn't done messing things up. God's people turned from him, but like I said before, God had a plan all along. This is where Jesus comes in. The little baby boy born in a manger. The man doing the miracles and preaching and teaching. This man, this Jesus, would give his life on the cross as a once and for all payment for our sins. And this payment would forever break down the wall of sin and guilt that separates us from God. Jesus' sacrifice made right the relationship between God and humans. Scripture says one day he'll return to finally redeem all of his children, ushering in an eternal reign from heaven's throne. And from that day on, all nations will join in an eternal song of worship to God. Oh, and you know that thread we talked about, the thread that ties all this together. That thread is love, God's unfailing love for all humankind. A love big enough to seek the redemption and reconciliation of all people throughout all time. A love big enough for the whole world. A love big enough for you. It is a cool story, and it's all right here. So if you want to know more, go ahead, pick it up. The thread is waiting.
Hi everyone, so I'm Cassandra from um, Bromley Congregation and today is my pleasure to share with you something of Hope Church's uh, vision and mission and calling. Uh, they believe, or we believe, that uh, we're a church called to go. We're a church called to love and a church called to work together. And today I really wanted to share with you a little bit about the go bit um, of our church mission. And um, a lot of that is being taken from Matthew 28 which is the Great Commission. Um, basically, this is um, some of Jesus' parting words to the 11 disciples. And um, we at Hope Church and many other disciples in other nations have taken on that mantle until Jesus returns to continue the work that he started off with his disciples, which is to take the word of God and the good news of Jesus Christ uh, to the nations, to baptize them, to teach them all that Jesus has commanded. And so, so exciting that he stays with us through his spirit. And we see in Acts that when Jesus goes to heaven, he leaves Holy Spirit with us to comfort us, to teach us, and to help us do this stuff that he's asked us to do. And so for me, it's really exciting. I love that Jesus asked us, asks us to do something and he's with us and so that means we win we get to win uh, we've read through to the end uh, of the bible and we know that the resurrected christ will return again and so it's really exciting something really exciting to be drawn into uh, because we get to do it through the power of the holy spirit and so i really wanted to just share two things with you today uh, from matthew 28 um, which is disciples and the nations. And in my life, this, these two things, especially Matthew 28, uh, the last two verses have been so integral in my life. Um, a couple of years ago, I went on a, just a journey with God and reading all sorts of things, um, and especially his word. I remember reading in uh, Revelation 5, 9, and Revelation 7, 9, and... Um, John records it saying this in both places. He says, With your blood, Jesus, you purchase for God persons from every tribe and language and people and nation. You have made them to be a kingdom and priests to serve our God. They will reign and they will reign on the earth. And verse, chapter 7, verse 9 is similar. He really says, there before me was a great multitude that no one could count from every nation, tribe, people, and language, standing before the throne and before the Lamb. And they cried out in a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. And for me, these verses just captivated me. I was so uh, excited. I, I felt like I found what I really wanted to be part of, what I wanted to make happen. And what I felt like God was saying to us, Let, let's do this. And it wasn't an optional extra. Um, a lot of the time we see Jesus saying to the disciples, if anyone wants to, if anyone this, in this instance, he says, go. Go therefore into the nations and make disciples uh, and baptize them. And, and I, so I was really captivated with the nations bit because someone came to my nation Someone went, someone took on that mantle and said, well, we're going to live for this because we know God's with us, God's in this, and this is what God loves. And um, so I felt, well, I'd love to be part of that. I really want to be part of what's happening in the nations. And so in the last couple of years, I've been journeying with a bunch of crazy people who will take the gospel to those very hard places where someone will never get an opportunity to hear about Jesus and what he's done for us on, on the cross, unless somebody goes there specifically, intentionally. Um, and they don't get to go there unless the church sends them specifically um, and commissions them and says, yes, bless you, brother, bless you, sister, you go and you do that and we will support you. And Hope Church does this as well. 
so many missionaries that we're supporting, not just financially, but pastorally as well, which uh, with the people that I work with is more valuable than anything else, knowing that somebody is praying for you, uh, somebody is rooting for you uh, and standing and petitioning Father God for you and your family uh, in various different times. It's really exciting. And so I love the vision that Hope Church has here. And we have a vision to support people, uh, encourage people in whatever you feel God is telling you to do. And um, traditionally going, as I've been saying, is you're a missionary, you're local, you go to a specific location, you go and do a specific thing. Um, and lockdown, 21st century UK looks very different. What we did six months ago is very different from what we did six years ago. And um, one of the things that I was thinking about and asking God and thinking, what does it look like for me to go to not just the nations, but just to go? Let, let's just start with going. And um, virtual spaces online spaces, all of those things, I thought to myself, what does it look like to demonstrate, to share the gospel in these places? Uh, we spend a lot of time online, Facebook, whatever it is, uh, Zoom calls, Zoom parties, whatever parties we're going to, uh, that are virtual, that are online. Uh, we do have an opportunity to be uh, demonstrating the, the gospel there, to be even sharing the gospel there. Um, so for me, when I'm online, I ask myself, I see something that maybe triggers me, or and I'm thinking, I want to react and say something or post something in return, whatever it is. And I ask myself, these days especially, I check myself and I say, what would Jesus do? Would Jesus really do this? Would Jesus say that like that? Um, I check my motivation for posting things because to be honest, my virtual footprint, my, what, my responses to what people are seeing and doing all add up. You know, people are watching, people are listening, they're looking. Am I the one bringing in peace? Am I the one bringing in the truth? Am I the one bringing in that sense that I have a purpose and I know that God's got a plan for my life, He's got a plan for humanity, for the, His creation? Do, we, do I really show that? And how do I practically show that? And you know, if you can't honestly answer that question is, would Jesus do this? Would he say that? If, if you can't, then don't post it. It's not helpful. It's not helpful for you uh, in, your, in your walk with God. It's not your helpful for your witness with others. You may feel it, but um, not everything is helpful to, to, to say. The other thing about spaces that we can still come into now easing of lockdown is basically with appropriate distancing, there is still ways of connecting with people. Uh, one of the things that I love about the UK um, is just the, the vibrancy, the multiculturalness of it all. And I wondered if you ever listened to the news about immigration and thought to yourself, well, this is an, a wonderful opportunity to go because the nations are literally at our doorstep. They're not just at your doorstep, they're at your school, they're at your um, school gate, they're at your workplace, they're at your supermarket, they're in your Pilates class, whatever. The nations have come to us and it's such an exciting opportunity to be able to welcome them with the good news of the gospel uh, and demonstrate to them the good news uh, out of genuine love that they are coming to us and we welcome them to our home. Um, so for me, that's particularly exciting. I love all things uh, international, multicultural. I, I love people. I love the way people are made, the way God's made us all are so different. I love difference um, and I celebrate difference and God celebrates difference. And so for me, immigration into the UK uh, is such a wonderful opportunity for us to go. And obviously with the right distancing and all the different good conversations you can have are still there. I wonder 
Also, if you've ever wondered or tried to have a conversation with someone from a different culture and it didn't quite work out because maybe you were just speaking literally a different language um, or virtually a different language because people have different from different cultures have different mindsets, they have different worldviews, they see things differently, uh, they see family differently, they see eating and celebration differently from the UK British culture. And um, I've been uh, privileged to hang out with some friends who are specialists in helping people uh, share their life cross-culturally and just prepare. And so, so maybe I wonder if in this season, uh, in your looking around and seeing who's, who's your neighbor uh, from another country, from another nation, uh, you would ask Holy Spirit to ask, to, to show you what you need to learn in this moment. Do you need to learn just basically what is worldview? Why does worldview matter uh, when I'm speaking to someone from another nation? You need to understand where they're coming from. Uh, missionaries and organizations like that have spent uh, several uh, centuries now learning and making mistakes and so they've come up with all sorts of things that stop you from making those same mistakes as well. That stop you from making those same mistakes as well. And um, you can just reap the benefits of that. Not only that, but you're also learning about God's heart for uh, the alien, the, the people who have come to your nation as a guest for either refuge or maybe just whatever uh, reason uh, that they've come and they're not in their usual place and you can be a person that can welcome them in your going in that way. And so that is uh, uh, the other opportunity to go that you can do is to look to who is uh, your, your neighbor from another country, from another culture that uh, you can befriend and welcome with the gospel and the good news of God. And so moving to disciples, one of the things that's really in my time with God and just trying to figure, figure it out. Um, I remember a couple of years ago, maybe it's not even a couple, let's go for 20. And uh, Rick Warren uh, wrote this book called Purpose Driven Life. And it was, you know, if, if you were there, you know, right? It was the thing to be reading. And so I got myself this copy and I, I just, I remember reading the first chapter and thinking to myself, what just happened? Uh, in fact, it was probably the first page because it felt like, you know, um, just this is my interpretation of what was going on in the book uh, or my reaction to the book or to the words on the book was he just took this wet fish and slapped me across the face. And he basically, <laughs> I will paraphrase, he said, it's not about you. It's about God. And in that moment, I, I just realized God was orientating my, my, my perspective, my vision to the true north, uh, that is Jesus. And so in previous times, he'd, he'd been there to hold me like a child and say, you know, but now that I'm older, he's saying, we need to go, we've got stuff to do. And this stuff is about me and my purposes for the nations, my love for the world, my giving my son to the world. And um, you are part of that discipleship cycle, that process. And it really kind of shook me a little bit. And I, you know, you wrestle when you come to your senses and think, gosh, I almost got that really wrong. But God is so good to us in the sense that he's so patient and he takes us through stuff. Um, and so in that moment of realizing that really everything is, is really about God and it's about his glory. And what does that glory look like? And what does that mean for me to worship God with others in, in that, in, in, because of that glory? What, is, what does it mean to make his name known and to pursue that? So I 
started the journey about discipleship, which was slightly a little bit less pressured, um, I realized that discipleship was something that the Holy Spirit was doing and it wasn't my job to fast track it uh, because if you know, he really likes to take his time and to form things in us. Uh, we get to be part of that formation process for other people. Um, what I really wanted to release for us today was to release the pressure to be something that you're not, especially when it comes to making disciples. Um, it is Holy Spirit's job to form things in people, but it is our job to, to speak and to act. And it's our, our job to be surrendered to what he's asking us to do for that person in that time. He may ask you to be part of discipleship for one person, two people, 200. Just being faithful to what he's asking you is what matters. Uh, and you, you will see that with time, you just become more confident in sharing, not just with those that know Jesus, but those that don't know Jesus. And that confidence is what we at Hope Church would love to inspire you with uh, and to equip you with as well um, and to journey with you um, and to release that, to say that it's okay. God is the one that completes it all. We just get to play with all the toys that he gives us. And it's an exciting opportunity. So to part with, I'll ask, don't, don't be what God is not asking you to be. He's not asking you to be this hundred discipler, thousand discipler, whatever. He's just asking you to be his son or his daughter who will take what the good news of, of Jesus Christ has done in your life and share it with someone else. Just one person at a time, one word at a time, one action at a time. It's as simple as that. Um, so. Maybe God wants to change your perspective today about what discipleship is all about. And also think about what discipleship for yourself is about, as well as for others. It's very easy to look at others and see things, but it's hard to look at oneself and think, Holy Spirit, I need your help. So loving God and making him known are integral parts of our calling, our calling as, as disciples. And it's okay to do that one day at a time, but I'll just release you all to know that um, whatever, whatever is going on, whatever it looks like for you to love God right now and to serve the nations, let Holy Spirit be the one that gives you that motivation, that gives you that perspective, that gives you that joy to see that in Revelation 5, 9, that great multitude of people. And you know, people did come to the UK and preached. Now we have thriving church that sends to other nations I just pray for us that Holy Spirit, you would seal in our hearts what you desire most to see in the nation of the United Kingdom in this time. And thank you that you are more than willing to help us in all of this, Father, and that you delight to do this with us. And we thank you that you so loved the world that you gave your son and you left your spirit to empower us. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Cassandra, for such a challenging word. I hope it has inspired and encouraged you as much as it has encouraged us. All we need to do now is go out and put it into practice. There are many, many people waiting to hear that God loves them and has an amazing plan for their lives. As we finish, can I remind you about the new era offering? If you haven't yet given your gift, 
please can I encourage you to pray about how much you should give and then contribute this to the offering. We'll be telling you next week about the total raise to date and really looking forward to sharing this with you. And finally, can we encourage you to join with the continuous prayer, sign up for an hour and just let's see what God will do through this three days of prayer. Have a great week, everyone. Be blessed. Here are some ways on how to give. The best way for us is by direct bank transfer. Please reference the new era offering. Alternatively, you can make a pledge. Again, please reference the new era offering. If you have any questions about making a pledge or you need the church bank details, please email david.dell at hopechurchuk.org. For all the other ways that you can give, please visit our website www.hopechurchuk.org forward slash new era offering. Jesus at the center of it all Jesus at the center of it all From beginning to the end It will always be, it's always been you, Jesus Oh Jesus, nothing else You're the center And everything revolves around you Oh Jesus, you At the center of it all At the center of it all Jesus at the center of it
church. Jesus, be the center of your church. Yes, Jesus. Oh, Jesus, be the center of your church. Let this be your prayer. And every knee will bow, and every tongue shall confess you. to think of those things, the things that get in the way, and just let them grow strangely dim right now in this moment as you focus on Jesus, as you turn your eyes to gaze at his beautiful face. Just let those things just disappear and just let him love you. Just let him speak over you. Just listen. Listen to him. Listen to his voice. He is so proud of you. He is so in love with you. All he wants is this moment right here, right now. Just you and him. Enjoying each other's company. Enjoying each other's presence. <laughs> 